Hey there, my amazing truth-seeking friends. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. This is your favorite royal critic back here again, and honestly speaking, guys, I can't even begin to tell you what we need to discuss today. So, grab your tea, get comfortable, because what I'm about to share will have your jaws on the floor. So now, let me tell you, as someone who's been following the royal saga for years, I've never seen anything quite like the spectacular fall from grace we're witnessing with the California duo. You know exactly who I'm talking about. The former actress, who couldn't hack it in the royal family, and the prince, who seems to have forgotten everything his grandmother taught him. Would you believe that our friends across the pond are finally seeing what we've known all along? Americans are waking up and saying, wait a minute, something's not right here. And let me tell you why this is so significant. America was supposed to be their promised land, right? Their great escape, their Hollywood happy ending. Well, that fairy tale is crumbling faster than a stale scone. Let's talk about what Niall Gardner from the Margaret Thatcher Center just revealed. Now, this isn't just any observer. This is someone with serious credentials calling them out as massive narcissists. And honestly, where's the lie? Every time we turn around, there's another interview, another complaint, another attempt to grab headlines. Remember that Oprah interview? Oh, let me tell you, that was just the beginning. They sat there in their multi-million dollar mansion, wearing designer clothes, complaining about how hard their life was while actual working royals were serving the people during a pandemic. The audacity. And then came the bombshells. The crying story about Catherine, which, let's be real, we all know who really made who cry, don't we? And can we talk about how they keep moving the goalposts? First, it was racism allegations that rocked the monarchy. Then, when the heat got too much, Harry's backtracking on ITV saying, oh no, we never said that. Well, which is it? You can't have it both ways, H. Speaking of their California life, let's discuss these mysterious children we barely see. I'm not saying anything definitive here, but isn't it strange how protective they are? Compare that to how William and Catherine share appropriate glimpses of their children, allowing the public to feel connected to the future of the monarchy while still maintaining proper boundaries. The contrast between the two couples couldn't be more stark. While William and Catherine are out there working tirelessly, visiting charities, supporting causes, and truly making a difference, what do we get from Montecito? Press releases about deals that never materialize, podcasts that fizzle out, and constant complaints about privacy while calling the paparazzi on themselves. You know what really gets me? The way they've treated the late Queen Elizabeth. This magnificent woman who dedicated her entire life to service, who welcomed Meghan with open arms, even letting her join family events before marriage, something unprecedented. And how was she repaid? With constant attacks on the institution she spent her life protecting. And now, according to Gardner, Americans are finally seeing through the smoke and mirrors. It's about time. The United States has always had a special appreciation for the British royal family. Americans adored Queen Elizabeth. She represented everything good about monarchy. Duty, service, dignity, and grace. These are qualities that seem completely foreign to our California couple. Let's break down their pattern. They claim they want privacy, then release a six-hour Netflix documentary about their private lives. They say they want to be independent, but keep trading on their royal connections. They preach about compassion, but have shown none to their own families. And that book, Spare, oh my goodness, where do I even begin? Harry literally aired every piece of dirty laundry he could find, including private conversations with his brother during their grief over their mother's death. Who does that? What kind of person uses their mother's death to sell books. The saddest part in all of this is watching Harry. Remember the old Harry? 
the cheeky, charming prince who was beloved by everyone, the soldier who served his country, the man who created the Invictus Games, that Harry seems to have disappeared, replaced by someone who appears to read from pre-prepared scripts and regurgitates whatever narrative they're pushing that week. You know what's really telling? The silence from their supposed Hollywood friends. Where are all these A-listers we were told were their best friends? The Cloonies, Oprah, they've all gone mysteriously quiet. Could it be that even Hollywood has realized that these two are more trouble than they're worth? And let's talk about their latest ventures, or should I say, failed ventures. Spotify deal, gone. Netflix struggling to find content worth producing? Check. Their brand is toxic now, and it's entirely their own doing. They've burned so many bridges, they're standing on their own little island, or should I say, their own little Montecito mansion. The thing that really gets me, and I know it gets you too, my loyal viewers, is the way they've treated Catherine. Here's a woman who has done everything right. She waited, she learned, she adapted, she serves. She's everything a future queen should be. And what does she get? Constant attacks and attempts to undermine her especially from someone who couldn't handle royal life for more than 18 months. Remember the story about the bridesmaid dresses? First, it was Catherine who made Meghan cry. Then, when the real story started coming out, suddenly it was, oh, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I've forgiven her. Classic manipulation tactics, trying to look like the bigger person while still keeping the negative narrative about Catherine alive. And what about their latest PR moves? Every time William and Catherine have a successful engagement or positive press, like clockwork, here comes another source close to Harry and Meghan with some new grievance or complaint. It's so transparent, it would be funny if it weren't so pathetic. The American public isn't stupid, and that's what Harry and Meghan didn't count on. Americans value authenticity and they can spot phonies a mile away. They see a couple who claimed they wanted privacy, but can't seem to stay out of the headlines. They see people who preach about mental health while publicly tearing down their own families. They see the hypocrisy of private jet users lecturing others about climate change. Let's talk about their so-called charitable work. What exactly have they achieved since leaving the royal family? Where are all these grand projects we were promised? The Archerwell Foundation seems to exist mainly to give out awards to their friends or release statements about current events. Compare that to the tangible work of the Prince and Princess of Wales, Catherine's Early Years Project, William's Earthshot Prize. The difference is striking. And here's something that really shows the difference between the two couples. When William and Catherine face criticism, they don't respond with lawsuits and press releases. They keep their heads down and let their work speak for itself. That's real dignity. That's real royal behavior. You know what I find fascinating? The way Meghan seems to have completely forgotten her own family while claiming the royals were unwelcoming. Her father, who spent everything he had to give her the best education, who never said a bad word about her until she cut him off completely, How's that for family values? And Harry, oh Harry, the man who once said his mission in life was to support his brother, to be his wingman. Now, he can't seem to stop trying to overshadow and undermine William at every turn. It's heartbreaking to watch, really. William and Catherine are trying to modernize the monarchy while respecting its traditions, and Harry and Meghan seem determined to tear it all down for their own gain. The thing is, my dear viewers, this isn't just about celebrity gossip or family drama. This is about an institution that has stood for a thousand years, that represents continuity and stability in an increasingly chaotic world. William and Catherine understand this. They're preparing to lead in a way that honors the past while embracing the future. Meanwhile, in Montecito, 
we have two people who seem to think that being royal is about red carpets and magazine covers. They've completely missed the point about service, about duty, about putting the institution and the people it serves above your own personal desires. And you know what's really ironic? They could have had it all. They had the support of the family, the love of the public, all the resources they needed to make a real difference in the world. But it wasn't enough. They wanted to be the stars, not supporting players. They wanted to be the main characters in their own story, not part of the larger narrative of the monarchy. The latest polling shows that their popularity continues to plummet, not just in the UK, but now in America too. People are tired of the victim narrative, tired of the constant complaints, tired of the hypocrisy. They see William and Catherine working hard, raising their children with proper values, maintaining dignity in the face of constant provocations, and they understand what real royal behavior looks like. You know what really speaks volumes? The way the rest of the royal family has handled this whole situation. King Charles, despite everything Harry has said about him, still mentions his love for his son in speeches. Queen Camilla, who's been attacked repeatedly, maintains her dignity and focuses on her duties. The contrast couldn't be clearer. And let's not forget the timing of their various revelations and projects. The Netflix series released just as the Wales family were trying to focus attention on important charitable initiatives. The book release overshadowing the King's first Christmas message, the constant drip of new information whenever the working royals have something important happening. It's so obvious, it's almost embarrassing. But here's the thing, my dear royal watchers, the truth always comes out in the end. The American public, as Niall Gardner points out, is seeing through the facade. They're realizing that what they're watching isn't some great love story or tale of persecution, but rather a carefully crafted narrative designed to keep two people in the spotlight at any cost. The saddest part is that it didn't have to be this way. They could have had a wonderful life as working royals, making a real difference in the world, supported by their family and the public. Instead, they chose this path of constant conflict and controversy, burning bridges and alienating people who once supported them. But you know what? The monarchy will survive. It survived far worse than this. William and Catherine continue to show what real royal work looks like. King Charles is proving to be a thoughtful and dedicated monarch. The institution is stronger than any individual's attempts to undermine it. And that's what really matters in the end. The monarchy isn't about individuals. It's about service, duty, and continuity. William and Catherine understand this. They're raising their children to understand it too. Meanwhile, in California, we have two people who seem to think it's all about them. And they're learning the hard way that the American public is smarter than they thought. So my dear viewers, what do you think about all this? Are you as frustrated as I am watching this ongoing saga? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more royal commentary. Remember, we're all in this together, watching history unfold and hoping that somehow, someday, Harry will remember who he used to be and what he once stood for. Until next time, keep watching, keep caring, and most importantly, keep supporting our wonderful working royals who continue to serve with dignity and grace, no matter what challenges they face. Your support means everything to them, and it means everything to me too. Stay royal, my friends. Peace out.